My life changed completely when my father took me to see Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. It is the first complete painting, he said. Leonardo set the ratio for complete art at 75% observation and 25% imagination. A real person in a landscape that's partly real and partly imagined. The aim of art, he said, is to represent the known world and to bring something unknown and imagined, attention, not fantasy, into it. But only a few artists followed Leonardo's ratio, and they are the only ones worth considering. Caravaggio said my father observed the everyday world and showed us that it was 75% real and 25% imagined. My father said that Rembrandt applied Leonardo's ratio by painting himself in 75% observed details and in 25% imagined brush strokes. David's portrayal of Marat portrayed only the ghastly observable 75% effects of the French Revolution and completely left out the imagined 25%, my father told me. Angre's Apotheosis of Homer depicted observable great contemporaries and imagined great ancients of civilization in a 25 to 75 ratio, my father explained. The horrors of the Great War of 1914 to 1918 were portrayed in Sargent's painting Gast, which was 75% real and 25% imagined tragedy my father told me. Out of the fog of war came Marguerite's 75% clarity that showed the 25% illusion of life in the human condition, my father pointed out. Escher turned the world inside out and upside down, but still maintained the 75% observation and 25% imagination ratio. In his still life and street, <clears throat> but that's not a painting. Mark Tanzi's Triumph Over Mastery 2 showed how the decadent 25% sought to whitewash 75% of the significance of the accumulated culture of civilization. In the 21st century, Michael Bormans rediscovered Leonardo's ratio and reintroduced the 75% observation and 25% imagination in his The Conducinator, and thank goodness, my father said. My life changed completely after my father took me on a walk through painting. <laughs>